Hi there, my name is Saiju Revindran. I am an IELTS trainer for the BMAX institution, Kollam. Why we are doing this video here is because to give you a few tips on your speaking examination. In this video, we will be giving out a few tips that you can work on and improve for your speaking examination. Here I have got eight different tips for you. And the first one is formal and polite. What I mean by formal and polite is we all know that by formal we mean we have to be well dressed while going for a speaking examination. Treat it exactly like a job interview. Also what I mean by polite is usually some of the students when they go for an exam they used to say sorry or what while they or when they do not hear what the examiner has said. So in this case, the most polite way to ask is, excuse me, can you please repeat the question that you have just said? And the second one is, please speak loud and clear. What I mean by speak loud and clear is, each and every single individual have their own different slangs. And slang is something that we do not have to worry about during our IELTS exam. The examiner only cares about how you are speaking, not in which way you are speaking it. So what I mean by speaking loud is because we have our own different slangs, some of the pronunciations that we make will be a little hard to understand. Also, you will be recorded while you're speaking examination. So that is for different marking purposes. So you have to be loud and clear, make your pronunciations correct so that they will be able to understand what you are talking about. And the third one is, which I personally think is the most important one of all, give a full answer. What I mean by give a full answer is, we can see that there are three different sections for our speaking examination. The first one is our introductory questions and the second one is Q card and the third one is follow-up questions but in the first one are introductory questions they will ask you about some personal questions and also the follow-up questions in both of these cases you have to be really careful to not to give one word answers but you have to give at least minimum three to four or five different sentences why because it will automatically last 11 to 14 minutes. If you do not answer in uh, more than three or four sentences, what happens is that uh, it will not reach the time that is allotted for the exam. So what happens then? They will ask you more questions and the more questions asked, the, some, uh, some of the students will not an, uh, know the answer to the new questions. And what happens? In turn, you will lose your marks. And the fourth one is pronunciations. Like I have said earlier, pronunciations is something that we require. We need to learn a lot of new vocabularies. But be careful during your speaking examination. How you can improve this is, while you're doing your writing, you can check the words that you commonly use and learn their pronunciations. I am not asking you to go home and take the dictionary and learn the pronunciations of all the different words. I'm only asking you to learn the words that you commonly use while speaking and writing. <clears throat> and the next one is vocabulary. So what I mean by vocabulary, it is something that even the British Council promote. They ask us to use a lot of different vocabulary. Why? Because using different vocabulary makes our sentences automatically complex. Okay, for example, what I mean by vocabulary is different words that you can find, for example, descriptive words or synonyms. Uh, examples of these words are adventurous, glorious, or glamorous for synonyms like instead of using big all the time you can use the synonym for big that is massive, colossal, gigantic, humongous. <clears throat> okay and the next one is also a really important one that is the sixth one which is repetition of words. It is a common mistake that every single student makes and that is they tend to repeat certain words after each sentence for example and actually I the problem with this is when you connect two different sentences with the use of and it forms one sentence 
and while you're speaking when you connect an entire conversation by using and the entire paragraph will turn into one sentence and that is a grammatic mistake there are certain ways how we can improve this for example um, there are different drills that are given on YouTube where you can practice your speaking drills also you can watch different British TV series TV shows while using subtitles why I'm asking you to use subtitles is because most of our students have the problem of thinking in their native language first and then converting, in, converting it into English. But when you watch it with subtitles, you have to follow the person who is talking in the TV show or the screen. So there will be no time for you to think in your native language. And the, another one is number seven, plural and singular words. This is a common, another common mistake that we tend to make. For example, still have seen students saying peoples instead of people why people is already a plural thing you do not have to add an extra s to make it plural also you have to be careful while you're listening as well for example i'll give you a good example a lady is talking about her cat she is saying her cat is sick but while you're writing it down you have written her cat is sick and the problem there is you have added an extra s and it changed the entire meaning of the sentence also if you're making that word plural you have to change the grammar of that sentence as well that is you have to change the sentence into her cats are sick not is sick so be careful about your plural and singular words the last one number eight is stay on topic and what i mean by stay on topic is i uh, i will give you a really good example a place you like to visit and this is a mistake a student that made he started talking about certain buildings in his hometown and that is the reason why he wanted to visit this place the place he would like to visit was Portuguese but he started talking about certain buildings that were built by the Portuguese in his hometown and what happened then was he started describing how his hometown is what benefits his hometown had by having these buildings there but what was the question asked to him a place that you like to visit and what he should have answered he should have told me or he should have talked about how portuguese is why is the reason he wants to visit portuguese thank you for watching this video i wish all the students good luck with all their different examinations please like and subscribe to this video and if you want more videos please follow our page thank you Five years of trustworthy service over 5,000 successful candidates. BMAX Group of Institutions. For more details, log on to www.bmaxacademy.com.